Welcome everyone to the Friar Field for this eagerly awaited county junior hurling final between Fenner representing the East and the Bricky Rangers representing the West. This game originally fixed for Walsh Park, then 48 hours ago it was changed to kill and now it's back here in the Friar Field, which is looking absolutely resplendent in the autumnal sun sunshine. The two captains just met there in the centre of the field, St Stephen Sullivan from Fenner and Fergus Nugent, who will be direct opponents throughout the hour. Um, the scene is set for this game, as I said, a huge crowd have gathered here today. Uh, the referee is Michael Wadding, well-known inter-county referee. Both teams are having their final team chat before the game. Uh, just before we start, um, having spoken to Stan Flynn, the chairman of the Fenner Club, he told me it's since 1969, Fenner have played in 12 county junior hurling finals without one single victory. So they're really up for it here today and hope it'll be 13 time lucky, while the Bricky Rangers are attempting to win their first county title since 1959, around the time Jim Bimbo McGrath was born. Okay, the scene is set for the first half. Fenner will play from right to left as we look out here. Fenner will play into what we call the country goal, and the Brickies will play from left to right. All players now taking up their positions as we are ready to get going. And first of all, we'll, everyone will stand up for the national anthem. Yes, the teams are ready now. 
The linesman for today, Morris Condon on the far side and Pat Casey from the Capo Quinn Club on the near side with the referee, Michael Wadding, as we said. The scene is set. Conditions are absolutely perfect, ideal for November. The field is absolutely, having had over 200 millimetres of rain in the past two weeks, it's looking absolutely brilliant. It's the best playing field surface at the moment in the county. So all the substitutes moving over to the stand side, we see the Bricky substitutes just jogging across the field there. So the scene is set. The bag woman, Trask Cummins, not coming as quick as the players, but taking her time. Ooh, a woman who celebrated her half-century birthday there after the intermediate final. So the scene is set now again. Both teams are lining out as selected. Everybody's in the middle of the field. Trask has decided to go back again. While team manager Mike Shalou jogs across. Mike's son, Cork, is operating at centre half back for the Brickies team. So referee stands in the middle of the field. Everybody is ready, the crowd is ready. Referee, there we go, county final is underway. First time pulling in the middle of the field. David Hickey flicks it up along, picked up at half back. Stalemate out there, I think we could have picked up at centre half hour by Fergal Nugent. The ball is on the ground, it looks as though the ref must throw it in. No, it's a free for the Brickies, first free of the hour. About just inside the 65 metre line. It's going to be taken by David Hickey. David, the trainee Garda. Man spends a lot of his time in Templemore and also in Mallow at the moment. David, about 62 metres out. Playing, playing into the country, into the town goal. He steadies himself. He lifts, he strikes, it's going to drop a bit short. It's in around the goal mark, it's gone slightly to the left and wide. First wide of the game. Puck out coming up, the puck out to be taken by the custodian, Derek Gahan. Derek, changes holdies for the puck out. Be interesting to see how far this will land. Derek, holds the ball up, pucking in, facing the sun. Here it comes. Not a bad puck, lands around beyond the middle of the field. Broken down by James Cooney, or by James Sheehan. On towards right half back, Peter Kelly. Kelly Fix it over the sideline, off the ganger, and it's a line ball for... Brickies have the wind in this first half, so it's very important that they get up a few few scores early on. Corner back to take the ball, Donald Kelly, brother of the wing back, Peter Kelly. Donald wearing two, red helmet, just inside the 50 metre line. Strikes the ball, it's along the ground, it's moving well towards the centre of the field. Picked up there again for Fenner, placed, placed out along, out towards the wing forward, the wing forward Stephen Fennell. Fennell. Farrell, he's got the ball, plays it in towards the full forward, it's in between the full forward and the full back, Cooney is behind, here comes Asti, first ball of the day, bursts out to the wing, plays it out towards the sideline, it's coming again, it's, it's heading towards the sideline, stays in play, picked up again in the middle of the field by Aaron Connolly, drops it down, pulled on first time by Vinnie McCarthy, Vinnie onto Conor McGrath, the youngest man on the field, Connor having difficulty gets it up, now he's got it. Drives it straight down towards Fergus Nugent. Plucked out the clouds by Fergus. Fergus tips it on the stick. Plays a low ball in towards the full forward line. James Cooney, a lovely flick on to Vinnie McCarthy, number 10. Have we the first score? Vinnie, no. Flicks it again. Stalemate back there. Picked up by cornerback Finley Ware. Finley high clearance towards Jimmy Sheehan. Jimmy, Jimmy knocks it down. Flicks it away. Picked up there by Connolly. Connolly for Fenner. Left hand. Free for... Uh, free for... A free there against David Hickey. Meanwhile, Jimmy Sheehan is on the ground. We hope it's nothing serious. Referee is speaking to David Hickey. Having a chat with the trainee Garda. Black card there for Davy. First ticking of the day. There is 14, is it? 14. The free taker, David Burns, one of the veterans of the Fenner team. About 10 metres in from the sideline. David. He lifts, he strikes. It's calling when it looks very good from here. It looks good, it's over the bar. The first score of the game for Fenner after three and a half minutes of play goes to David Burns, the full forward. So the puck out. Mehal G with the puck out. The commerce student in UCC. Pucking with the wind. Here comes Mehal. He lifts, he strikes. It's landing just beyond the middle of the field on about the 70 meter line. 
Stalemate there. First time pulling by the centre half back, Stephen, Sol Stephen Sullivan. In along, towards Shane McGrath. Shane McGrath is beaten. Johnny Cooney, his man has gone inside him, but now comes G. Great stuff by G, the goalie. Flicks it out to Cooney. Cooney is coming out. Austin plays it out along the wing, but there's no one there but Connolly for Fenner. Connolly unmarked. A high lobbing ball in towards Asti Cooney. Asti takes it again. He's out past one man. He's having trouble getting in his pass. He's lost the ball. Picked up by the corner forward. The corner forward is Kenny, the Piltown man. Kenny overplays the ball. It's a free out for the Brickies. This one is going to be taken by Johnny Cooney. Johnny, the leaving self student, 20 metres out. Johnny is steadying himself. The man who's really put creation on the map here in Abbey side. Johnny steadies himself on the 20 metre line. He lifts. Strikes a long ball out towards the left half forward. The left half forward is Ian McCarthy. Ian outfielded by Peter Kelly that time. It's a free. But great play there by Cully Kelly. Right half back for Fenner. Fenner have started the better at, in the first five minutes. And lead by one point to no score. Playing into, the, into what's quite a strongish breeze. The free is just inside their own 65 metre line. The taker. Taken by the centre back, Stephen Sullivan. Stephen goes a low ball, great ball for a forward. In towards the corner forward, Kenny. Kenny has the ball in his hands, pretends to go left, passes it back to the wing forward, O'Neill. O'Neill shoots, it's high, it's lobbing. Is it good? It's a great score for Fenner from 50 metres out by wing forward, Owen O'Neill. Fenner definitely have started the better. Brickies need to sit down fairly soon as they have the assistance of the strong breeze. Again, Mihal G with the puck out. Long ball, this is a better puck out, landing well inside. Two bricky men go up together, no calling. Stalemate, flicked on by centre forward Fergus Nugent. He's still going on, forgot the ball that time. Picked up by Stephen Sullivan, the centre back. Out along, towards Pardee Nugent. Pardee has the ball, well held by Pardee. Seems to be fouled, no, he's coming on. Flicks it away, intercepted. Pardee is there again, Pardee is fouled, the free for the bricky Rangers. This one is going to be taken by Carrick Shalou. Carrick leaves it to David Hickey. David, man who won an under-21 Munster medal, football medal with Waterford back in 2003. He was the goalkeeper on the team that day. David did on the halfway line. Brickies badly need a score. They trail by two points to no score. Six and a half minutes gone. David lifts, it's high, it's lobbing in around the house. James Cooney, the guard, they had two guard, flicked and has gone slightly to the right and wide again. The second wide for the Brickies. Two wides for the Brickies, two pints for Fenner. The puck out once again, Derek Gahan. Derek. This beautiful autumnal day here in Fraherfield. The puck out is not as long as the last one. Drop shot to midfield. Fergus Nugent puts up his hand, breaks it down. Picked up by the ganger. Ganger McCarthy. Ganger seems to be fouled. He has it again. He's still going. Flicks it on to the Jimmy Sheehan. Jimmy. Jimmy. Still going on. Breaks it to Vinnie McCarthy, the farmer. Bring it. Great ball by Jimmy. Cross, but it's plucked. No, it's still. Picked up by Shane Nugent. Nugent shoots. It's over the bar. First score of the game, a great score from the Shane Nugent. Great ball in there by Vinnie McCarthy, the farmer. Picked up by Shane Nugent. One of three sons of Pat playing here today. Two points to one in favour of Fenner. Bricky's first point came after just under eight minutes of play. Puck out again. Derek Gahan again with the puck out. Here it comes. It's going for a lower one. Needs to be blocked down, flicked down. Who's there first? Stalemate. David Hickey is on to it first. David off the left-hand side. Plays a great ball. It looks good from back. I heard fantastic point from David Hickey from 65 metres out. The sides are level. Two points in less than a minute there from the Bricky Rangers. They need all every score they can get with the assistance of this breeze in the first half. Once again, Derek Gahan with the puck out. The sides are level. Facing it up, the last one was very, very low trajectory. This one is much higher, seems to be a bit further. Dropping about 50 metres out. Flick down between Sullivan and, and, and Nugent. Nugent under it. Stalemate out there. Picked up by wing back Phelan. Phelan plays it along the ground. Intercepted by the centre half back, Stephen Sullivan. Sullivan down along. Throws Carrick. Carrick, the centre half back. 
The linesman is waving, yes, Boris Condon there indicated that Cork stepped out over the line. It's a line ball in the middle of the field on the far side for Fenner. Number five, will it be Peter Kelly again? Yes, there's nobody rushing over to take it for Fenner. They're playing against the breeze, so they'll be taking their time. They're deciding. Nobody seems over anxious to take it. Once again, it's Colley. Peter Kelly. Wing back. He's also secretary of the club below on Fenner. Stephen strikes it. It's not very, very long, but it's broken down, still continuing. First time pulling, again picked up in the middle of the field by Connolly. In towards the number 12 is Farrell. Farrell, Stephen Farrell, loses the ball. He has it again. Hand passes it out to 13. 13 is Thomas Mansfield. Mansfield back to number 12. Farrell picked up again, back there, and cleared out by Pardee Nugent. Great play by Pardee. Down towards his brother. His brother is there, Fergus Nugent. Centre half forward, he's on the 60. He's inside the 50, he's blocked down. He's still there, he's still battling. He has it back again. This man takes a lot of pushing and shoving. He still, he needs a bit of support. Sullivan dispossesses and clearing down first time for Fenner. It's gone in behind Johnny Cooney. Johnny's man. A low ball cross field. Here's Paddy Nugent, Paddy misses that ball. Picked up again here by the wing forward. The wing forward, well, great block by Paddy. Paddy is fouled, fantastic play there at wing half back by Paddy Nugent. The man was doubtful, a dislocated finger in the challenge game last week, but he's playing here and he started very, very well. Great play there by Paddy Nugent at right half back. Manager Mike Shalou is shouting mad at his charges down on the sideline, getting a bit excited. Very early in the day yet. His son Carl to take the free inside his own 50 meter line. He lifts, he strikes, it's a good ball, down towards Conor McGrath, McGrath's out, he tucks it out of the clouds, he has the ball, Conor McGrath, good hand pass out to Shiner, Shiner blocked down first time, Shiner's back again, he needs to get the played along the ground, here comes Vinnie McCarthy, Vinnie has it, Vinnie goes for the direct route, but it looks to be going slightly, he's gone to the left and gone narrowly wide. <laughs> Vinnie McCarthy there, the third wide of the game for Brickies. The wides are building up. They need to be converting. They need a higher conversion rate at this stage. Again, Derek Gahan. Derek, long ball, breaking down around the middle of the field again. Passes everybody. Pick Carl Chalou, flicks it across. A stalemate. First time pulling towards Farrell. Dispossessed again by Pardy. Pardy flicks it back to the centre. Great ball by the centre half back. On towards Ganger. Ganger and Kelly. Ganger and Kelly are still. Kelly has it first. Kelly, off his left. Plays it down towards Conor Phelan. Flicked out. Conor Phelan has the ball now. He's running back. Is it gone over the sideline? No, oh, Conor is back in time. Gets it up. Bit of stalemate. Three against one. Dispossessed there by Owen O'Neill. Owen and his brother Walter, sons of the well known Greg O'Neill, the man that was famous with Tramore and Fenner down through the years. Misses today's game as he's currently holidaying in South Africa. The line ball. Johnny Cooney. Johnny to take it. Just inside the 50 metre line. Great ball by Johnny. Way down towards the centre, towards the half-back, flicked out by the half-back line, picked up again in the middle of the field. Here it comes towards Fenner, picked out by Shane McGrath. McGrath, better known as a footballer, plenty of speed. Here he comes, hand passes it. His hand pass goes astray, but then so does Conor Field and picks up the rebound. Both players having great difficulty in picking, picking the ball. Looks like it could be, no, stalemate. Picked out in the middle of the field by Casey. Casey is fouled, the free end for Fenner. About 60 metres out. Out comes ace full forward, David Burns. David Burns coming out to take it to attempt to put Fenner back in the lead again. Nearly 13 minutes gone, two points each. David Burns to strike into the breeze. Straight in front of the goal. He steadies himself. He lifts. It's looking good, it's looking very good. It's straight, it's over the bar. Not a fantastic free. Two points for freeze now from David Burns and Fenner have yet to register a wide. Sorry, one wide for Fenner. Puck out again, Mihal G. Mihal to the right of the post. Here it comes. Dropping out around the right half forward position. Vinny McCarthy's hand goes up. Vinny is under it. He picks it up. Yes, he's got the ball. Direct calling by Vinny. In along. James Cooney is coming up, but the ball doesn't get that far. Connor 
First out, Stephen O'Sullivan has at the centre half back the electrician. The sparks flying back there between himself and Fergus Nugent. Plays the ball off the left hand side. There's Shiner. Shiner kicks it on in front of him towards David Hickey, beaten first. Connor. Connor Phelan flicks it back again, picked up by the centre half forward Walter O'Neill. O'Neill, here comes Johnny Cooney. Johnny is first out, but he has he the ball. Leaves it to Carrick, beaten by Kenny. In towards the full forward, Burns. Burns taken on Asti Cooney. Burns shoots. Great score by Burns from top 40 metres out. Four points to two for Fenner. Bickies need to be sure on the ball. Fenner, any attack they've got, they've nearly converted it into a score at this stage. 14 minutes gone, four points to two, playing against the breeze. Michael G, out towards Ian McCarthy and Peter Kelly. Broke drops behind, picked up by the centre half back. The centre half back is O'Sullivan. Sullivan, down along, again down towards David Burns and Asti Coney. Burns puts up the hand, breaks down, picked up by Coney's brother. Johnny, Johnny clears it first time. Connor Feeling beaten in the air by Owen O'Neill. Pulled on first time by Carrick Shalou. It's gone out over the sideline. Which way is it going? We don't know. Yes, it's gone to the brickies. It went off a fenner, man. That decision not being greeted by everyone in Fenner very well. David Hickey to take this. No, he's been replaced. Connor Phelan, Connor Phelan, left half back. Man who drives for the family hardware business. Connor, off his left hand side. Great ball by Connor. In along, it's still going. Picked up by Ganger. Ganger McCarthy. Plays a diagonal ball across James Cooney. Cooney has the flick. Cooney still has the flick. Picked up by Vinnie McCarthy. Vinnie's getting into some great positions. Yes, well done. Vinnie earns a free there. Very industrious. Vinnie McCarthy at right half forward. Giving 100% there for the Bricky Rangers. David Hickey is getting ready to take this free. About 30 metres out. Straight in front of the goal. Here we are. 16 minutes gone. David Hickey. He lifts, he strikes. Looks good. It's over the bar. The side. Bricky's trailed by one pint. Four pints to three. Bricky's have yet to be ahead in this game and we're approaching 16 minutes. The puck out again. Derek Gahan. Man who formerly played with Belly Duff Lower. Once again, he shows up the ball. Which side will he go for this time? Goes down the right-hand side. Out towards, well, well taken there by Connor Phelan. Ganger, Ganger plays the ball. In towards the full forward. The full forward is on the ground. Has he the ball? No. Shane McGrath is beaten there by the cornerback. The cornerback is Kelly. Shane Nugent. Played out. Out over the sideline. A line ball for the Brickies. Looks as though Ganger's going to take this one himself. It's on the 50 meter line. Bricky's need a man in front of the ball. Just outside the 50 meter line with the assistance of the breeze. Ganger, good ball, low ball in towards the full forward. Got past Shane McGrath, there's a few players on the ground. Conor McGrath nips across. He's 30 meters out, he plays the ball. Blocked down, James Cooney is on his knees. Who's coming out with the ball? Fergus Nugent breaks it down, there's stalemate there. Fergus gets a nasty accidental wrap into the shoulder there. Referee has blown the whistle. Looks as though it's going to be a throw-in ball on the 20-metre line. Yes, this game could boil down to who wants it the most. Hunger could win it in the end. And a little bit of luck. Throw-in between David Hickey and the Stull Sullivan, the centre-back. He must throw again. Not happy with the first one. Here we go again. Michael Wadding throws in the ball, gone past boat, picked up again. Vinnie McCarthy got a nasty clatter there, but no free. We're, we're moving in. Here's Conor McGrath. Stalemate, stalemate. Penner seemed to be coming out with it. No, flicked away by Shane. Jimmy Sheen, Jimmy Sheen. TPO Manny is there as well. Conor feeling, but out comes. Man coming with the ball. Flicks it out to the number eight. Peter Casey. Casey, difficulty. Has the ball in his hand. Good clearance by Casey despite. Picked up by Fergus Nugent. No, he's dropped it. Back again. Number eight for Peter Casey. Casey miss hits. Both teams having difficulty. Picking up the ball. Jimmy Shiner Sheehan. Shiner Sheehan back into the centre. Fergus Nugent is there, beaten for it. Picked up by Owen O'Neill. Owen O'Neill drops the ball. Stalemate on the ground. Next bit of a wild pull there by Connor Field in the wing back. It's a line ball for the 
A free from Fafener on, on their own 65 metre line. It looks as though Connor Fielding is going to get a ticking here. It's a yellow card, the first yellow card of the game after 18, 19 minutes of play for Connor Phelan. Bricky wing back. Once again, the electrician, centre half backs and captain Stephen Sullivan to take it. Regular centre half back Jim Halley was dismissed in the Eastern final and misses today's game. So captaincy and centre half back being taken up well by Stephen. His father played in his heyday with Bally Hale Shamrocks in Kilkenny. So you'd easy know where the holding came there. Here's Stephen Sullivan, just inside his own 65 meter line. Lifts, it's a good ball, landing in around the 21 meter line. Plucked out the clouds by O'Neill. O'Neill trying difficulty in turning, he's holding it on, he drops the ball. But here comes Shane McGrath. Shane busts out the wing and drives it out to the middle of the field. Out again, Vinnie McCarthy is up there, so is number seven. Vinnie is working very hard. Jimmy Sheehan is out first, played along the ground. Great ball, out towards Peter Kelly and Ganger. Who's going to be there first? Peter Kelly seems to have the start, but Ganger gets the holly in. Kelly picks it up, hand passes it back to the centre half back, Sullivan. Sullivan plays it direct down along the field. Fenner seems to be moving the better at this stage. No ball in towards the corner forward. The corner forward is Kenny. Kenny is having foul. Picked up by Pardee Nugent. No, stalemate. Will the referee throw this in? Yes, he has to. There's been a change there on the Fenner team. Corner forward Kenny has moved out to left half forward and Stephen Farrell has gone in left corner forward. So it's a throw in just inside the 50 meter line, Jimmy Sheehan and Peter Casey. Ball stalemate, passes the two of them, who's there first? Yes, a free for the break, he's a bit of a push there on Paddy Nugent. Paddy doing very well at right half back for the Brickies. And out to take the free is centre half back Carrick Shalou. Still four points to three. Nearly 21 minutes gone. The first goal could prove vital in this decider. Just inside his 50 metre line, Pat Casey comes back to the sideline. The linesman, Carrick, lifts and strikes. In along towards the 20 metre line. James Cooney knocks it down to David Hickey. Bit of a chop there, gets away with a centre half back by Stephen Sullivan. Sullivan is out again. Low ball. James Sheehan has it. Jimmy. Plays it out to Vinny McCarthy. Good chance here for the Brickies. Vinny slightly to the left and wide. They needed that score, Brickies. A bad miss there by Vinny McCarthy. Free opportunity there from inside the 50. These are ones you need to be putting over in the county final. Could prove costly at the end of the day. Once again, Derek Gahan with the puck out. The wides again for the Brickies. Four wides for the Brickies. Still only one for the men from Fenner. Puck out. Landing around the middle of the field. All midfielders are up there. Break broken down. Fergus Nugent seems to be first in it. He's again over the sideline. Off Fergus. And it's a line ball for Fenner. Again, wing back. Wing back Peter Kelly. Known to his friends as Corley. Corley going to take this. Dead in the middle of the field. On the far side. Corley playing it down along the wing. Lovely little chip. Knocked down by back to the centre of the field. Pulled on by Casey. Casey in a long towards Shane McGrath and Farrell. Passes the two of them. Farrell is back first. Paddy Nugent is back covering as well. But Shane is there. Great play by Shane. On to the centre. On to Jimmy Sheehan. Jimmy Hand passes it on to Connor Phelan. Connor drives it down. Great ball in towards the full forward. The full forward has the hand up. Breaks to David Hickey. David just beaten by the centre half back. This man is having a great game. Stephen Sullivan at centre half back. Plays it. St Hickey is centre forward at the moment. Fergus Nugent centre field. Picked up in the middle of the field. A lot of pressure being put on, but back again to the centre half back. Releases out to Kelly. Kelly at wing back. Pressure being applied. Still coming out. Kicks the ball. Down towards Carrick Shalou. Carrick is back there. Picks the ball up. Turns to his right. Now he's out in his left. Down along the wing. Again. Kelly at wing back. Another man. Half back line playing very well for Fenner at the moment. Picked up by number 15. Eamon Kenny. Kenny plays it out along the wing. Towards the centre half forward. Walter O'Neill. O'Neill. Big high ball. Shane McGrath is back there again. This man has done very well but having difficulty this time. Here he comes. Great speed out of this man. Soloing way out of his own defence. Is he going to kick it? No. He hand picks it on. Towards Paddy Nugent. Paddy. Difficulty again. Hitting the ball. Brickies have difficulty clearing the ball out the half back line. Stalemate. It's going to be a throw-in ball in, on the 50-metre line. 
Here we are. Ball is in. First time pulling in there. Paddy Nugent is in the thick of the action. Breaks back towards. Schiak, Schiak miss hits the ball. Breaks centre half forward. Stalemate. Nobody has the ball. Nobody seems to want to pick it up at this stage. It's back into Fenner. Picked up by the centre half forward. Walter O'Neill. Can Walter get his being pursued by two Bricky Row? Justy Coney fouled hand on the back. Free out for the Brickies. 24 minutes gone in the first half. Very low scoring encounter, four points to three. But you must remember that the Brickies have the assistance of what's quite a brisk breeze here at the moment. Again, Johnny Cooney to take this one. Johnny, way out in the left, left corner back. Good drive from Johnny. Lands in towards Ian McCarthy and Peter Kelly. Ian, first on to it. Lovely flick in towards David Hickey. Dangerous signs here if Hickey can get it up. He shoots. A 65, well saved there by Derek Gahan in the goal. David may have taken his pint. They could have done to draw level. So it's a 65 for the Brickies. So it looks as though David Hickey is coming out to take this one. Almost dead straight in front of the goal, slightly to the left. Morris Condon looks at his watch. 25 minutes have elapsed. David places the ball on the 65 metre line. Brickies badly need a score. He lifts, he strikes, it looks good from here, straight over the black spot. The sides are level for the second time. Four pints each, they were level at two pints each. Now they're level at four pints each after 25 minutes and 45 seconds. Yes, David Hickey scored three points for the Bricky so far. David Burns, the full forward, has scored three points for Fenner. Both have two from freeze and one from play. The puck out, Derek Gahan. Uh, once again, landing around the middle of the field. Everybody's up under, stalemate again. Who's going to pick up this one? Fergus Nugent, Fergus is first out there. Drives it down, in towards the corner forward, his brother Shane. Shane has the ball, no, he almost has the ball. Yes, a vital free for the Brickies. Don't, don't dispute it, we're told. Yes, David Hickey. Will this put the Brickies in front for the first time? About 40 metres out. 43 metres out, slightly to the left. Up centre, David Hickey. Lifts, strikes. The umpire reaches for his flag. Yes, Brickies are in front for the first time. Nearly 27 minutes have elapsed. It's five points to four from the men from the Bricky Valley. Derek Gahan once again steadies himself for the puck out. Vinnie McCarthy urging his men on. Being marked by T.P. O'Mahony, the manager of the pub down in Fenner, Mother, Mac Mother McHughes. The ball breaks out between the two, passes the whole lot, pulled on first time by Fenner. A race between Carrick, Shalou and O'Neill. Shalou is there for or Jimmy Sheehan. Jimmy flicks it back. Back towards Shane McGrath, back again to Shalou, Shalou, good ball, out towards Vinnie McCarthy, F Ganger is on the ground, Peter Kelly is not, he's on his feet, he has the ball, be tattled again by Shane, by Connor, Connor Field, two against one, can the Brickies get this one, yes, well played by the Ganger, Ganger plays the ball in towards the centre, here's the full forward, Cooney, Cooney is on the ground, he's been on the ground a good bit so far, the ball breaks down, well cut there but don't, by O'Neill, but Shane McGrath, it breaks, but here comes Carrick Shalou at centre half back, pulls out along, out towards Shane McGrath, out near the 50 metre line. Shane lifts, well done by Shane McGrath, down along the centre, down to his first cousin, Connor is arriving, the leaving star student. Picked up at, by number nine, Anne Connolly. Connolly plays it low along the, towards Connor forward, Kenny, Kenny. Low ball over to the other corner, Mansfield. Mansfield is coming across, off his left hand side, in between. Mehal G is out. G steadies himself. Well played by G. Clearance out to the middle of the field. Once again, flicked away by Johnny Cooney. On towards Fergus Nugent, walking tirelessly. Up along the centre. Connor, Connor McGuire is on to this one. Connor forgets the ball. Beaten by Finlay Ware, the man with the Scottish connection. Out towards Ganger. Ian McCarthy. Ian has the ball. Out in the middle of the field. In again towards Cooney. Cooney has the hand up. Waiting for the break, it's picked up. Cooney has it in his hand, yes. Will he pass it back? He picks it again, he turns right. 
Chance of a score for James Cooney. He lifts, he shoots, it's over the bar. A first score from the full forward, Cooney. After 28 and a half minutes, Bricky's lead by two points. Bricky's up seem to be working harder for each other at this stage. We're fast approaching half time, less than one minute. All depends how many extra minutes will be played. And the breeze, if anything, seems to be stiffening. Again, Derek Gahan with the puck out. Six points to four to the Bricky Rangers. Paul lands again in the middle of the field. Hands are up. No. Owen O'Neill seems to have dispossessed by Fergus Nugent. No ball. Centre half back Stephen Sullivan out along the wing. Ian McCarthy coming more into the game. Somebody's on the ground out there, Shane Nugent. Who has the ball? The ball is with the ganger. Good ball across. Oh, just misses David Hickey. Vinnie McCarthy is there. Vinnie is contesting. Vinnie is digging deep. He has the ball. What will he do? Oh, he didn't do very well. He flicked it into the intercepted there by the wing back. Number eight for Peter Casey. Casey on a solo run, forgets the ball. Paddy Nugent is quick on him. So is Vinnie McCarthy. This man, oh, Vinnie was fouled there. Straight in front. This man is putting in 110% here today at right half forward. This man will be heading to Australia before Christmas, so he's giving it his last shout. David Hickey is over again. Just in front of our commentary position here, dead in the middle of the field, five yards in from the sideline. We're just gone over the 30 minutes. David Hickey. Six points to four to the Brickies. He lifts. It's going slightly. It looks to be landing around the... Gunter ran slightly to the left and wide. So it's fast approaching half time. The puck out again, Derek Gahan. Seems to have had a lot more puck outs than Mihal G in this first half, but you'd expect that playing against the breeze. Six points to four, the Bricky Rangers lead. Referee calls a halt, one minute of stoppage time, half time, Bricky Rangers not six, Fenner not four, Bricky's have, having had the assistance of the breeze. So both teams head to the dressing room to recharge their batteries and come out with plan, plan B for the second half. There's been no change on either side so far, just a few positional. So both have got the same 15 that started. Our team. Uh, Number 12, Stephen Farrell, seems to have departed from the scene and looks as though he's replaced by number 17, Michael O'Brien, known as Mob, M-O-B. Yes, referee stands in the middle of the field. Bricky's this time to play against the, against the wind, lead by six points to four. Referee Michael Wadding checking with his linesman, looks at his watch. Here we go, second half is underway. Again, stalemate in the middle of the field, picked up by number eight, Peter Casey. Casey in towards the corner forward, the corner forward is Mansfield. Number 17, that's O'Brien. O'Brien has a shot. What a start by the substitute. Over the bar by Michael O'Brien. This man, we were told before the game, he'd be on. He's only on less than, less than 20 seconds in the second half. There's only one point between. A fantastic start to the second half for Fenner. Michael O'Brien, the man they call Mob, operating at top of the right and wearing 17. The puck out again. Michael G. Michael G. He's... His father, Finton, a great bricky man down through the years, places the ball out to the middle of the field, towards Jimmy Sheehan, flicked on, first by Casey, Casey miss hits the ball, picked up there, Vinnie McCarthy is working hard, but out first comes Fergus Nugent, Nugent flicks it out, out the wing, towards number seven, T.P. O'Mahony, T.P. O'Mahony is fouled by Fergus Nugent, T.P., the man who manages the only pub below in Fenner, Mother McHugh's, they say if Fenner win tonight, there'll be celebrations there for the next week, coming out to take the free, is the full forward, it looks like the full forward coming out to take the free. Yes, full forward, David Burn Burns, way out, over 65 metres out, just inside, just two metres in from the sideline. David, a chance to level it up very early in the second half. David Burns, the taker. He lifts, he strikes. It's a dangerous ball. It's gone slightly to the left and wide. A wide ball there for Fenner. Puck out, Mihal G, 
David Burns makes the long journey back into the full forward position. Interfaced, he faced the mechanic. Yes, the mechanic, Osti Cooney, operating at full back, wearing the, the now infamous yellow helmet. Michael G. Michael strikes the ball out to the left hand side, just 60 meters out. Hands go up, breaks down first. Stalemate again. Who's there first? Nobody can get it up. Dropped. Fergus Nugent's trying to get position. Connor Fielding is there. Number 12 for the Bricky Zine McCarthy. Flicks it on, but getting caught in the divots at this stage here. Fergus Nugent has the ball. Great play by Fergus. He seems to be foul. Yes. Fergus has won an amount of possession out there in the middle of the field. David Hickey continues to operate at centre half forward with Fergus now operating at centre field. That, that's since the second half of the first half. The free on his own 65 metre line. Karak Shalou. Karak lifts, strikes the ball. In towards the corner forward, the corner forward to Shane Nugent. Nugent is out first. He has the ball in his hand. He's on a solo run. He's going across the field. He shoots. The shot looks quite good from here. It's over the bar. Great score from Shane Nugent from 30 metres out. The Brickies lead. His second point of the game. Brickies lead by seven points to five. Three minutes gone in the second half. Brings a smile from selector Noel Murray on the sideline. The man with the peak hat beside Mike Shalou. Fellow selectors, Phil Kinsler and Pat Barry. The puck out again. Derek Gahan lands around the middle of the field. Passes him back. Connor Phelan is out first. Connor flicks the ball on. Fergus Nugent walks again. Fergus no. Connor Phelan flicks it out. Beaten this time by number 10 O'Neill. Stalemate. Plucked out by Jimmy Sheehan. Sheehan plays the ball. Looking again for Nugent. Nugent has the ball. He's gone past number two, Pete Donald Kelly. Kelly picks it up. Kelly with the red helmet. Left-handed, up along the centre, up towards the substitute, grabbed out of the clouds by O'Brien. He's playing very well. On to number eight, Casey. Casey shoots. It seems to be going very much to the right, but Mayhar G is out first. The student, difficulty getting it up. He has it in his stick. Plays it out towards Vinny McCarthy and the wing-back. The wing-back TPO man. He appeared to be fouled there, but referee bears play on. Party misses the ball. Stalemate. Pickies need a bit. Man or two over there. Just scare some bodies. Dangerous ball across Mayhar G. It's over the bar. Great score from, great score from Fenner from out near the sideline. This time the score seems to be wing forward O'Neill. Seven points to six. Four points gone in the second half. Mayhall G. The puck out again. Ball breaks out towards Paddy Nugent. Nugent and Kenny. Jimmy Sheehan. This possessed there, Karak Shalou. Shane McGrath comes across. Man picks and strikes. Number nine, Connolly. Connolly plays a dangerous ball in. It's going in towards Mob. Mob against Mike. Yes, here comes the goalie, the goalie. Great clearance by G. Out along towards the ganger. Ganger in. Schock in the tussle, just four from Fenner out there. Seems to be outnumbered. Casey, long ball across, but across comes Johnny Cooney. Cooney, first there. Drives it out towards Vinnie McCarthy. Vinnie puts up the hand. First time, great ball into centre, towards the ganger. Ganger has it on the first time. He's on a solo run. Hand pass it into Hickey. The ball looks good. Hickey has it. Blocked again, but Ganger is back again. Ganger is on the ground, picked up by the wing back, Curley. Curley. This Kelly, down along to the centre forward. The centre forward, and in towards the mob. Mob has it, 20 metres out. Hand pass it, great interception by Sam McGrath. Can't hold on to it, flicks it out. Bit of panic in the bricky defence. Johnny Coney, corner back. Not a great clearance. Out towards the 50 metre line. Knocked down there by. Seems to be fouled, but referee says play on. Stalemate. Will the referee throw it in? Karak Shilluk, Jimmy Sheehan. Schiak is there again. Schiak is on the ground. Ball is in towards Asti Cooney in the full forward. Burns. Cooney is there. Has the ball in his hand. Well played by Asti. And big long clearance. Out towards Vinnie McCarthy. Vinnie and TP O'Mahony. Vinny was there first, great play by Vinnie McCarthy, takes the shoulder, Superman, the man heading for Australia, plays it down towards Stephen Sullivan and David Hickey, Sullivan is there first, up along the centre half, to the centre forward, O'Neill, Vinny is there again, he's in the thick of it, he's on the ground at this stage, Paddy Nugent is back again, well played by Paddy, high lobbing ball, out towards Conor McGrath and Finlay Ware, Connor seems to be there first. Finley reaches in over. Finley is minus the holy. Connor has the ball. Pass it into David Hickey. Big chance here for the Brickies. David has gone in. He's 20, 14 metres out. Shoots. Goal! Super goal for the Brickies. 
fantastic play by the young, youngest man on the field, Conor McGuire, hand passed it to David Hickey, and the trainee Gardy buried the ball, low and hard past Derek Gahan, Bricky's lead, a very important score, the first goal, 1-7 to 6 points, Derek Gahan with the puck out, out to the middle of the field, stalemate out there, flicked on, there's men on the ground everywhere, picked up by Kelly, the wing back, playing very good game, high ball in towards Burns and Knocked down to the corner forward. The corner forward is Mansfield. Mansfield shoots. It's low. It's gone out for a 65. Plus 65 for Fenner. The second half seems to be starting off at a much higher tempo than the first. David Burns is making the long journey out from full forward to take this one. We said the first goal could be vital, but Brickies need to build on that. There's no point in sitting back here today. One seven to six points. 1-4 from David Hickey now operating at centre half forward. Stephen Sullivan not as dominant as he was in the first half. David Bourne is out at full forward. He's also the treasurer of the club. He could be spending tonight if the, if the success goes their way. Almost straight in front of the goal. David lifts. He strikes. He has the distance. It looks good from here. It's over the bar. It's back to three points again. 1-7 to 7 points. The puck out again, Ma Ma Michael G. The Commerce student again, wearing his peak cap for the second half. The wind doesn't appear to be as strong as was early on, but who knows, it could pick up again. The puck out, out towards the middle of the field. Hands are up, breaks down. Spotty Nugent, again Fergus, he's won a pile of ball out there, great ball by Fergus, Talk past Conor McGrath, here comes James Cooney, he's coming at speed, he's on the ground, Conor, Field, Conor McGrath is there as well, Conor is working tires. great play by Conor, the leaving self student, he hopes to be back studying the books, win or lose tonight, in towards Shane Nugent, Shane Nugent is on the ball, Shane steadies himself, he shoots, it looks good from here, gone slightly to the right and narrowly wide. Bit unfortunate there, but Shane is showing very well for the ball in the top of the left position. Puck out again, Derek Gahan. Gahan, mighty puck out onto the Brickies 50 metre line. Gone past it. Brickies half back line. The one shouldn't be leaving the ball back as easy as that. Ball going towards the sideline. Will it get there? Just out over. Line ball for Fenner. About 48 metres out, just in front of the stands. Morris Condon showing Peter Casey where the exact spot. Phil Kinsella looks unperturbed at this stage, Noel, Noel Murray, the whole lot is, Jimmy Sheehan faces the ball, Shiner, former Waterford glass employee, now with Tom Conn's hardware, low ball, stalemate there, Fergus Nugent is there again, Johnny Cooney grabs the ball, Cooney, great, great play by Hard, breaks out in the middle of the field, again there's two Fenner men there, they're on a bit of a sore TPO man, he is fouled again, Brickies can't, discipline needs to improve on the team. Olin Casey warming up on the sideline for the Brickies. Yes, wearing 20 a man. There could be a lot of timber flying when Olin arrives up. So free in again, David Burns. He's been unerring from free so far. This one. 58 metres out. Almost directly in front of the posts. This to put two, two points between the teams. David lifts. He strikes. It looks good from here. It looks here. Down to two points, a change in the positional change in the Bricky team. In Gang of McCarthy, gone top of the right, Conor McGrath gone out left half forward. A man that went off at half time for Fenner looks to be reappearing. Number 12, Stephen Farrell. Morris Condon trying to attract the attention of the referee. Yes, he's done so. 10 minutes have elapsed in the second. Stephen Farrell is going back on and he's replacing Finley Ware, son of the vet, that famous department vet now retired. And also a change in the Bricky Rangers, number 20 is going in. Olin Casey replacing James Cooney who got a great point there in the first half. James Cooney, the, the guard trained in Templemore, now operating in the Dublin area. Puck out again, 1-7 to 8 points, Bricky lead by 2 points. Michal G, out to the middle of the field. Puck out is quite good against the breeze. Stalemate again, but once again, Fenner beginning to pick up the brakes in the middle of the field. Hi, who's going to be there first? Johnny Cooney comes out, claps it from the cloud. Super play by the student, the leaving self student. Down towards Owen McCart. Breaks it back. 
Back towards Vinny. Vinny hand passes it. Is this Ganger? Ganger. Difficulty picking it up. Ganger is there. He's not beaten yet. Both men forget the ball. Conor McGrath forgets the ball. Plucked out the couch. Great hooking there by Shane McGrath. By Shane Nugent. Unfortunate there, but it's a free, yes. Unfortunate, but it's a free for Fenner. I think we've less than 20 minutes left. It's the team that's going to show the greater commitment could emerge victorious here today. Stephen Sullivan back to take this free. About 30 metres out, slightly in from the sideline, from his own goal. This one should land around the 20 metre line above or just inside it. Some mighty stroke. Gone past there again, Mike O'Brien. He's causing problems since he came in. Lovely flick, but he flicks it, goes straight to Connor Feeling. Connor, long clearance out towards the sideline. Connor McGrath is there. Yes, it's, it's a controversial one. Seemed to appear to go off the Fenner man, but Morris Condon stands for him and has decided to throw in. Yes, it's a Bricky's ball. Correct decision. We had the board's eye view of it up here. Connor touched it onto the. Tommy Lynch is warming up for the Brickies, number 16, warming up on the sideline, 12 minutes, 40 seconds have elapsed in the second half. Connor feeling to take the sideline ball. Every puck is vital, the ball is low. Connor McGrath has the ball, drives it on again, in towards the centre to Vinnie McCarthy. Two men on the ground, Vinnie gets a vital touch to Fergus Nugent. This man has picked up a, an amount of ball. Not the classiest hurler, but he definitely puts in the work rate. He has it again in the hand and drives again. Out towards own Ian McCarthy. Oh, Stephen Farrell intercepts. Well done by Stephen Farrell. Being pursued by two players. Hand passes it. On to Casey. Casey plays a high ball. In towards Cooney and Burns. Where's it going? A dangerous ball. They look at the ground. Johnny Cooney is there. Has he got it out? Flicks it out the wing. Shane McGrath is there. Scoops it up. Great play by the full back line. On towards Pardy. Wing back Pardy Nugent. Pardy has the ball. Seems to be fouled there first, but referee gives him the advantage. Party could have taken the free, I'd say. Towards Vinnie McCarthy. Off the Fenner man, it's a line ball for... Off T.P. O'Mahony's stick, a line ball for the Brickies. Mike Chalou is making another change here. Tommy Lynch. They're trying to get the linesman, has gone asleep. He's back again. Morris Condon was going the wrong way there, but he's rega regained his equilibrium. His new haircut over the weekend is not standing to him at the moment, but Tommy Lynch has gone. Ian McCarthy has called the shore. Ian put in a tremendous amount of work while he was on, and now Tommy Lynch has gone to top of the left. So it's it. Well, it's the Ian has a record in this championship. He slept at 9 o'clock after every match so far, especially in the local bar. Will it be there tonight? And hopefully it'll be if it, is, it will be in victory. Stalemate out in the middle of the field. Out there is David Hickey has the ball. David way out off his left hand side. A dangerous ball in around the house. Hands go up. It breaks. Who's out first? Speed is out. Shane Nugent is coming. Shane, lovely flick. Great play. Great play by Shane. Steady. That looks a mighty ball from the Nugent. Super ball from Shane Nugent. Three points for the top of the left from Shane Nugent having an absolute blinder on top of the left. Every time the ball goes in, it smells danger for the Fennerman. It's back to three points. A goal in it again. The half back line here need to get on top. They need to be more decisive. Ball out to Conor McGrath. Conor arrives. Yes, off the Bricky man. Off the Fenner man, I should say. 15 minutes and 9 seconds have elapsed in the second half. Everything to play for. The first aid woman, Joni, is in. Joni McGrath is in to check on Conor. But Conor seems okay. He's willing to. There was a change there on the Fenner team. Gone off is number 10. Owen O'Neill has been replaced on the Fenner team. Connor's feeling slips to Jimmy Sheehan. Jimmy along the ground. It's hell for letter stuff here now. Connor McGrath, brilliant pick up by the student. 17 years of age. Super ball across the field. Out comes Tommy Lynch. Tommy flicks it on. It could be a good ball to David Hickey. David is there again. There's two, two Ricky men. 20 has it. Olin Casey back to Hickey. Hickey turns. Can he score? We need a score. Over the bar. Will he go for it? Shoots, poor effort, but it's there, yes. Didn't look great first. Tommy Lynch, first score of the game. Brian Sullivan is on the field for Fenner. He's replaced number 10, Owen O'Neill. Things are happening here, tick and fast. The scoreboard says 1-9 for the Bricky Rangers, 8 points for Fenner, 4 points in it. 16 minutes gone in the second half. The win seems to have died considerably. The next few minutes will be vital. Every minute is vital. Low ball, Johnny Cooney and this man, Mop. 
Mop has caused a lot of problems since he came on. He's looking for the ball again. Kind of wonder why he wasn't on at the start. Stalemate in the breaks in. Man going for goal. Hand pass. Have we a flick away? We missed the ball. Connor Feeling is out first. Connor is there using his speed. Has the ball in his hand. Great play by Feeling. Flicks the ball. Still has it. Still has it. Great holding. Yes. Mighty play by Schiach and he wins, he wins the sideline ball. That's the determination that's needed to win county finals. Shane McGrath is coming out to take it. The trainee's teacher, the man from the Mary Eye. He'll hardly be in the Mary Eye tomorrow morning, but we do not know. Places the ball about 45 metres out from his own goal, leaves it to the HUD. The, to Han. Han, Johnny Cooney, leaving Sir Student. Pat Collins. Of course, himself and Conor McGrath in their early days. They brought him to reach county finals. That's the man you need behind him. Johnny, great line ball. Down towards David Hickey. Hickey puts up the hand. He's got the ball. He's on a solo run. He's taken on by O'Sullivan. Hickey has the speed. He seems to be fouled. Caught the ball three times. Very unlucky there. He appeared to be fouled. It could be a vital decision on the game yet. He appeared to be fouled, but he did catch the ball a third time after that. And Stephen O'Sullivan, who's not as dominant as he was in the first half to take the free. 45 metres out. That could be a vital decision. Fenner trailed by four. High lobbing ball. It's going to land around the 20 metre line. Holleys will go up. Mop is there. Holleys are up. Out comes Fergus Nugent. Trojan game. It's down towards Conor Field in the set. Conor McGrath. McGrath has it. He's on a solo run. This man has speed. He has devastating speed. He's on the 60. He's on the 50. He shoots from 40. It's going slightly to the right and it's gone narrowly wide. He had the option of David Hickey just inside him but Conor went for the score. But again, electrifying speed by the student. The youngest man on the field at 17 years of age. The puck out. Son of Jim. Known as the Bimbo. A man that was born the year. Bricky's last won this title back in 1959. Out towards Paddy Nugent. Paddy break knocked down. Towards Vinnie McCarthy. The farmer against the publican. What a combination. Shoulder off each other. The man that the publican from Mother McHugh's in Fenner facing the farmer. The only farmer on the field today, Vinnie McCarthy. Vinnie will be a farmer no longer next month. He's emigrating to Australia. So much for the single payment. But it's a line ball and TP O'Mahony is going to take it. TP. It's not a great one, but it goes off Vinnie McCarthy. Only goes five metres. Look at the watch, 19 gone, 11 to go. Consultation again between the Bricky Rangers selectors. Pat Barry is on his knees. He was often on his knees. Line ball, plays the ball. Party Nugent, party. Ever a, a man very doubtful early in the week, hooked and it goes out over the sideline. About 55 metres out, a line ball for Fenner. Everything to play for. The next five minutes could be vital. Line ball to be taken over on the far side by low ball. Paddy Nugent is there as well. Paddy goes. He's, this man has got speed. Great clearance by Paddy between Sullivan and Hickey. Sullivan is there first. Hickey is pursuing him. He must stick with him. You have to work hard. Out towards the, out towards the mob. The mob is arriving. But there also is Conor McGrath. Conor Feeling on the ground. There's three or four on the ground. Carrick Shalhou. Misses the ball, out comes Karak Shalu has the ball. Not a great clearance. Picked up by number five. This could be a big score. It looks a great one. Michael G, great catch in the goal. G, will he drive it? Great clearance by the student. Out to the middle of the field. Vinnie McCarthy and TP are racing for it. It's just gone out over the line. Still, the wind not as strong as it was in the first half. That went way beyond the halfway. A line ball again for Finner. Just inside. TP O'Mahony. Oh man, not a bad line ball. Paddy Nugent that passes it, goes back towards Carrick Shalou. Carrick much more in the game in the second half. Down towards Tommy Lynch. Lynch is away. Referee uh, judges that he fouled a bit, maybe a bit rough on Lynch there, but it's no good. Game goes on. Foul there on Stephen Farrell. Over goes Stephen O'Sullivan. 50 metres out from his own goal. Pat Casey just inside the 50 metre line. This is where discipline is vital. Defences need to be tight. No classy stuff. Lifts the ball. Landing on the 20 meter line. Where does this go? It's gone past 20 meters. It's gone way past. It's on the ground. Asti Cooney kicks it out. Out towards the sideline. He's still heading there. He has the ball in his hand. Asti turns it. Drives the ball way up in the air. Is it gone out over the sideline? Down towards Vinnie McCarthy. Vinnie puts up the hand. 
Yes, it's gone off Finney's hand and out over the line. Less than eight and a half minutes left in the game. Aaron Connolly to take this one. The midfielder, the two midfielders, the two youngest men on the Fenner team. Aaron Connolly and Peter Casey. And 48 metres out. The ball is a good one. It's landing in. Plucked out of the clouds by Cardiff Shalou again. Very dominant in the second half at centre half back. Down towards Vinnie McCarthy. Vinnie dispossessed, but he's back again. Great play by Vinnie and Fergus Nugent again. He hasn't the ball in his hand, but he's still there. His body is there. He's got ever. Vinnie McCarthy whips first town. Great commitment there. Fergus Nugent is injured at this stage. Break and play. Ten are making. Yes. We're looking at Kevin Burns. Kevin, the man they call the stunner. Making a vital change here. Substitute being called down. Eight minutes left in the game. The gate man is having difficulty fagging out. He can't get the gate open. He's warming up. We heard Tommy called. Is it Tommy Power? The trainer, Jim Baldwin from Dunhill, is also on the sideline. We look. The substitute is coming on. The stunner is making a change. Yes, Thomas Power coming on for Fenner. They're trying to... Morris is having difficulty catching the... Yes, here he comes. Thomas Power has gone in. A change on the... Thomas Power has gone in and he's replacing... Yes, I can't see who's coming off. Is it, is it David Burns? Maybe not, maybe not. I can't see right who... What number is coming off here? It looks like the full forward David Burns. David has given his all here today. Five points, four from freeze and one from play. Look at the watch, 23 minutes have elapsed in the second half. David Burns moves towards the sideline. No ball, plucked up by TP O'Mahony. O'Mahony's having difficulty, flicks it back again to Connolly. Connolly a low ball to the centre, flicked out again by Hard. Conor McGrath, great ball, who's running on to this first? Shiner, Shiner is out first. Representing Tom Cohn's hardware. Shiner, he's on the ground, but he's, he won't stay on the ground. He's up again. Kelly has played a great game at centre half back. Ball in towards the centre. Schiak is there. Ken Schiak gets a touch to it. Get it into his hand. He has it in his hand. He's fouled. Walter O'Neill gone off. Sorry, Walter O'Neill gone off. The centre half forward has departed the scene and has been replaced by Thomas Power wearing 18. Free for the Brickies. Carrick Shalou to take it. 1-9 to 8 points. 24 minutes have elapsed in the second half. Time is quickly evaporating. Carrick, big high ball. Down towards Shane Nugent. Coming out as well as the full forward, Olin Casey. Messman plays more football than Holding. He has the ball in his hand. What's he going to do? He hand passes it. He did the right thing. Connor McGrath. Connor drops the ball. Vital drop. Great flick back by Connor. Great determination. Michael Chalou getting, I've never heard so much talk out of Michael as I've heard today. Getting a bit excited, would you blame him? Five minutes, less than five and a half left. Just inside 50 metres. Good line ball to the middle of the field. Fergus Nugent again, this man has had a stormer. Will he drive the ball? He did. Plays Vinnie McCarthy. Vinnie, fouled, great play by Vinnie. This man puts his body where others don't. Fantastic play, he'll be ready for Australia, I'm sure, come next month. David Hickey, a vital free. They lead by four. Would be nice to make it five with less than five minutes left in the game. One nine to eight pints. Half time to six pints to four in favour of the Brickies. David Hickey, the man who scored one four so far. His goal could be a vital difference. David lifts, he strikes. To me it seems to be going slightly to the right. It's gone well wide from David this time, but then again, does have Fenner wasting no time. I said we've less than five minutes left. The puck out. Shawnee a bit shot to midfield. Shiner is up first. Holleys are on the ground. Scott Connor feeling. Great ball along the ground. Shane Nugent is showing for it. He's out again. He's been there all day. He picks it up. He almost has it up. He's still fighting. Will he give it? He's gone himself. He's heading the right direction. Blocked down. Well blocked down by Peter Kidd. Peter Kelly, a man who's had a storming game. Connolly at wing back. This man is not willing to throw in the towel. Four minutes left. Maris Condon moves back the ball. Somebody else moves it forward. The goalie has actually gone back to change his hurley. Time is quickly evaporating, as we said. Four minutes left in the game. Derek Gahan is back out. Bit of excitement on both sidelines at this stage. It is in the melting pot. Brickies have the upper hand with less than four minutes to go. Stephen Sullivan gone to midfield to try and rally him as the ball breaks down. Super catch there. 
Jimmy Sheen, but he fails to connect. He's beaten for the ball. Osti is caught by the full forward. It could be a vital time yet. The ball is with the full forward. David Burns, well blocked down by Conor Fielding. Brilliant play by, by Hod. Hod. Han, Johnny Cooney. Great catch by Hickey. Super fetch in the middle of the field. Referee judges him to over carry the ball. A bit unlucky there. David Hickey, free for Peter Kelly to take it. Looking again at the watch, 27 minutes gone, three left. A goal at this stage would really put the cat among the pigeons. Will the Brickies defence stand strong? Cora, Chalou and Asti, not, not the longest puck today. Who's out to catch it? Nobody has caught it. Get the ball out to the wing. Somebody is coming with it. Hand passed out to Connor McGuire. Connor, great clearance by Connor. Shane Nugent is into the action. Well played by Shane, it lands. This man is doing very well. Flicks the ball back, he's got to fight. Everybody has to go. Number eight is coming out, Peter Casey. Casey, out over the sideline, it looks like a line ball for the Bricky Rangers. The stunner looks stunned at the moment. Kevin Burns on the sideline, throws the ball back. Conor McGrath to take it. Getting instructions from the manager, Michael Shalou. Michael, his son, Cork is having an absolute blinder at centre half back in the second half. 28 minutes nearly gone. Phil Kinsella checking with Noel Murray. Great line ball. Gone down the field. Shane McGrath's battling. So here comes David Hickey. Hickey is on a solo run. Can he put this one over? He lifts. He strikes. It's over the bar. The cup could be heading to the Bricky Valley. 110 to 8 pints. Michael Shalou does a little jig down in front of us. We haven't seen Michael dance for a long time. He could be dancing tonight. The puck house not a great one. Picked up in the middle of the field. Bricky's Billy McCarthy. The work the Trojan. Himself and Fergus Nugent have worked tirelessly around the middle of the field. Conor McGuire is there again. Everybody is giving 100%. Out it comes to Hickey. Hickey, that man with a bit of class, dispatches the ball to Paddy Nugent. Paddy, if he could ever pick it up and let it go. Referee looks as though he's going to throw in the ball. 110 to 8 points. Noel Murray is rubbing the hands. A bit prematurely. The scene is set. 29 minutes have nearly gone in the second half. One. The ball is in. Stalemate in the middle of Connor Feeling. Misses the ball. This game is not over yet. It's not over. Johnny Cooney, I'll tell you, there's men on the ground everywhere. The corner forward has it. 15. Eamon Kenny. Kenny shoots. It's over the bar. 110 to 9 pints. 4 pints in it. I look at the watch. 29 minutes and 5 seconds. We're in the last minute of normal time. How much will be added on? 1 minute in the first half. The puck out. Mayhall G to take it. Mayhall. In absolutely no rush. He steadies himself. He lifts, he strikes. It's landing around the middle of the field. Vinnie McCarthy and Fergus Nugent are there. They've been there all day. But this time it's the men from Fenner. We're in less than the last minute of the game. Fenner man is going backwards, but still you must put on pressure. They're chill chasing. He seems to be fouled. He's not David Hickey. First decision went his way today, but we forgot the ball. Jimmy Sheehan. Jimmy Sheehan beaten by number nine. And Connolly. Connolly in along the centre. Who has the possession? Asti Cooney is nearly on the ground. Out comes Cardiff Shalou. Party Nugent. Party the man had a dislocated finger, but he's battling. Drops the ball. We've just got to the 30 minutes. 30 minutes have elapsed. Connolly takes a dangerous ball. The full forward. Where are we? Shane McGrath is there. He's coming out to the sideline. Hold the ball, Shane. Hand passes it. On to Connor Phelan. The long delivery. Is it the delivery of victory? We're into stoppage time. 30 minutes and 10 seconds have gone. The men from Fenner. Will it be a record 12th defeat in a county final? They haven't won in the far field. They've played three here in the in this century and have yet to get a victory. Asti Coney is out, the mechanic. Here he comes, drives the ball out. Towards Connor, Connor McGrath. Connor beaten by, great clearance there by Schock Feeling. Plucked up again. It's a rear guard action. A great dangerous ball, going slightly to the left and gone wide. It looks as though the county title is destined to the Bricky Rangers for the first time since 1959. The Mentors on the line. Men that are going to make history, the manager, Michael Chalou, and he's... His selectors, he went for experience. Phil Kinsella, Pat Barry, Pat still wearing the Wellingtons and Noel Murray. Yes, the puck out again, Michael G. 31 minutes have gone. Is this the final whistle? The puck out is long, it's not. There must be one more minute left. It breaks into the middle of the field. Vinnie McCarthy and T.P. O'Mahony. T.P. is there first, but he's been pursued as he's been all day. Tommy Lynch is out. Tommy, football goalie. Great ball by Tommy in towards the centre. Shane McGrath, Shane Nugent just beaten there. Ball breaks down. 
Steel base again. Pardee Nugent being backed up by his brother Fergus. Pardee lifts. Hand passes it back to Corrock. Corrock at centre half back. Makes room for himself. Opens the shoulders. Drives it long. In towards the Finney McCarthy. The man for Australia. Will he take a point? Finney lifts. Strikes the last goes to the man he's heading for down under. Vinny McCarthy. The icing is on the cake. The ganger holds the hands up. Will he be asleep before nine tonight? We do not know. Nearly 32 minutes have gone in the second half. 111 to 9 points. Ball breaks back. Who's there? Conor McGrath. Great ball to Shane Nugent. Shane Nugent and Donald Kelly. Shane is there again. Shane, Shane is on the solo run. He's on the 60. He's on the 40. He shoots. It's gone to the right and wide. A wide is nearly as good as a score. 32 minutes have gone. Two minutes of injury time. Referee. The puck out is coming again. It breaks to Stephen O'Sullivan, but Pardee, Pardee is there, Pardee Nugent, dispossessed this time by Connolly, Connolly a long ball, Cooney, Cooney and Burns, well played by Cooney, here comes Cork, Cork having a stormer here at centre, back in the second half, out towards Peter Kelly, he's been outstanding today for the man they call Colley, outstanding today for Fenner. Connor Fielding, fantastic black. Connor's played a great second half. Sticking with his man, facing number 19, Brian Sullivan. Super commitment from Scott. Knocks the ball out over the sideline. Morris Condon waves. Time is definitely up. John Joshi and Mickey Hickey. Respective fathers of the two midfielders are heading towards moving out of their seats. The excitement. There could be a busy, busy few days in the local and Tommy Powers for the next few days. And Brady D. These won't be without its customers as well. Plucked out the clouds, the shot that's over the bar. Great score there by the full forward. David Burns, one of the veterans. Six points for Burns, but six points looks as though it won't be enough here today. 33 minutes, we can't understand where all the time is coming from. We're in the fourth minute of added time. Bricky's lead by four. The puck out. Michael G, long ball, it's all over. Bricky Rangers are county champions, they're onto the field. Michael Chalou is dancing in the air. This man, they say he can walk and water in the Bricky Valley, being c congratulated there by Richard Tobin, first to congratulate him. They're moving down from the stand very quickly. We'll, we'll hope to get a few words with a few of them now in the minute, just as they go onto the field first. Some of the supporters, John Joshi, not as quick as he was 20 years ago. Well, there it is, Bricky's first title since 1959. Captain Fergus Nugent played a captain's part, a Trojan performance. Can I go again? Yeah. Here they come, the Bricky team moving towards the stand. Eddie O'Grady, a great star over to the club, congratulates Captain Fergus Nugent. Fergus coming to receive the trophy. James Coney, yes, fantastic scenes here as the Bricky Rangers come up to see, receive the cup. Fergus Nugent leads him up. He played a captain's role, Trojan performance there. The ganger is going well. James Cooney, another stalwart. The ganger, well done, ganger. Well done, lads. Connor Field, another superb. Mahal G, the UCC student. Jimmy Sheehan, one of the veterans of the team. Shane McGrath, he'll hardly be back in Mary Eye tomorrow, but we don't know. Tommy Lynch heading up. Cooney's all the substitutes moving up there to receive their medals. Here they come. Ladies and gentlemen. Olin, Olin McCarthy. Shane Nugent, three points today, another great performance. David Hickey by Mandic got that vital goal heading up. Vinnie McCarthy, the man heading for Australia, last point of the game. Conor McGrath going studying tonight. Here they come. So here we are. The Bucky Rangers getting ready to receive the trophy. Great excitement here. 111 to 10 points. Big day for the Brickies here. Well done. I'd like to congratulate him. After a bit of a beat in this to be the football, this is the proper way to bounce back. And I know that you'll be one of the 
wish you all the very best. Now, it gives me great pleasure to present the trophy to the winning captain, Fergus Nugent. That is big day for the Bricky Rangers. Fergus Nugent receives the trophy. Fergus Nugent, all smiles, receives the County Junior Hurling Championship for the Bricky Rangers, the first time since 1959. There it is. We have a speech from Fergus. First of all, I'd like to thank this great panel of players behind me for the huge commitment they put in throughout the year. Uh, two weeks ago, we had a huge disappointment in losing the football, but these lads are after putting in, you are after showing huge character and heart coming back from that. So, well done to the players. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank the management team, uh, our selectors, uh, Phil Kinsella, Noel Murray, Pat Barry, and especially our manager, Mike Shalou. <laughs> We had put in huge work for the past two years, and I hope this win today goes some way towards repaying me. Um, I'd like to thank our first aid women, Trash Cummins and Joanie McGrath, for all the work we put in this year and today as well. <laughs> I'd like to thank our great supporters for being with us throughout the year. Um, Annie gave me a legal chance we all seem to be there, and this win today is for you as much as anyone else. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsors um, who have contributed throughout the year. Um, first of all, the local uh, for sponsoring his t-shirts and also Murray's Pharmacy for sponsoring his gear bag during the year. <laughs> and also Tommy Powers for, for the given us throughout the year as well. Um, um, I'd, I'd like to thank... Uh, I'd like to thank our executive committee as well and uh, our chairman Brian Hiller for all the work they put in throughout the year behind the scenes. And uh, also I'd like to thank the, um, the underage committee and anyone who's put in work coaching underage teams over the years. Because this day is the culmination of a lot of work over the years. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank Benner for coming down today and giving us a really tough game. We knew it to be very tough. And uh, I'm sure we'll be back next year fighting hard for the championship again. And we wish you the best of luck in the future. So, three cheers for Fenner. Hip it! Hip it! Hip it! Hip it! Thanks a lot. Well done, Shane, boy. Well done. Well done, lads. Well done, Paddy, boy. Great stuff. Well done, well done. Well done, Connor. Well done, Shane, boy. Well done. Well done, lads. Well done, well done. Well done, lads. Tom, don't 
Today, day today for the Bricky Club, their first junior hurling title in 46 years. As I said here, Jim McGrath was born, or supposed to be born anyway. Here we've got all the court connections. First of all, we've got Pat Newton. Pat had three sons playing today. Pat, what does this mean for the Bricky Club? It means everything, but just to put the put in context, I'm not a court man. I'm a Clash Ball man originally, and I'm a, a definitely a very strong Bricky man now. But it means everything to the Bricky Club because I think they're going to be very good in the team. Starting with 10 under 21s. Uh, and finishing I suppose, with 11 or 12 and uh, I, 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 I think this was what this, this club needed for all the, all the good work that's done on the bridge. Yes? No, what, what does this day mean to you Joe? 
so, something wonderful altogether because this is the first senior championship we have won since we bought the field in 1984 and hopefully we'll only go from strength to strength now. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, Joe, and Joe, does it make up for the disappointment of losing the football there two weeks ago? I know it was fierce disappointment, but as you said, the first, the first senior championship you've won. So you've won a lot of juvenile ones. It's great to get the first senior since 1984, and you've you've acquired more land this year, and you've got your second field, and you're really one of the most progressive clubs. I suppose the Manchester United had the whole of the GA world around here. Yeah, well, hopefully this will be a lead for all those younger teams coming on stream now, and that uh, you know we, we 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 shouldn't have any 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 problem for now. And it will also help the football there as well. Of course, know. and as Pat already mentioned, 10 under 21s. Thank you very much, Joe. Move along here to John Henry. John, another man with the cock connection. John, what what what's your assessment of today a fantastic day for the brickies and i think it has really as joe said it has copper fastened the work the effort and the commitment and i think it's on the start of something big so i think that what we have started out in the brickies it's only it's in the infancies and i want infancy and i want to thank everybody concerned and i think that there'll be i think at least we will we will be going until christmas well done, because we are not finished yet, as you know, we have the Monster Junior Holding Championship, we'll leave that for another day. Uh, Mr Casey has gone away from us there, could we get a quick comment from him? Derry. Derry Casey, whose son came on here today. Derry Casey, Derry, one second, Derry. <laughs> Derry, a man camera shy today, we'll have to chase Derry, Derry. <laughs> his son came on there today and played a pivotal role as, as did everybody else but there he'll be camera shy today he's waiting till the Munster Club Championship has won he'll be back with us ok thank you who? who's that? look at him there he's gone Mickey, Mickey, oh. would John Joe do an interview for the Kelly Connection? Mickey, the Kelly Connection. The victorious team manager Michael Shalou. Mike, must be a very proud day for you. Uh, fantastic win, uh, Tom. Fantastic out here. They showed great character on the second half. Our backs off the wall, really. And Six points to four on the up after playing with a good strong wind. Yes, I was just saying, halfway through the first half, he trailed by four points to two, playing with a strong breeze. Things didn't look great at that stage. Yeah, as far as the lads are nervous, you know, it's understandable. They're all just 10 on the 21s or something there today, and a young team. Yeah, but that's, isn't, isn't it great to have such a young team? Something to look for the future. Joe Keane pointed out to us early, it's the first adult championships county they've won since she acquired the new field. Oh, that's fantastic, yeah. Definitely. Uh, so many young players, it's, 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 look, it's great when you go up to the with so many young players. Like most clubs, they have an old team when they win this junior hurling. So, yes. You know, and it, it, a lot of them retire after winning it. Like so. Again, you're doing, you're doing great work at underage over the past number of years and it's now beginning to pay fruition. And I suppose today it really culminated in winning this junior hurling title, which many people wouldn't have envisaged two or three years, three or four years ago. I say without a doubt, uh, I suppose the important thing is to win. An adult title, like right, we won the minor holding last last year and the under 21 holding, but they were B grades, like. But to come down and win a junior title after that, it's brilliant, like. And as you said, with such a young team, we are saying in commentary that the first goal was going to be vital. Six points to four up didn't look good enough at half time to a lot of people. He yeah. probably went out in the second half. But as you said, nerves early on and. Yeah, I thought I thought actually against the wind that we get more space. Because it's inclined to bunch when you have a wind and long drive, we're inclined to drive long ball. Like and second half, the ball was holding up and we were able to run onto the ball, which means we had more space. and We had we were, a bit, we were younger, obviously, so we were a bit fitter. Like. And as you said, the space was created and you availed of that space. You had very, some very fast forwards, Shane Nugent, Conor McGrath to mention, but a few tremendous work around your centre-back car for the great second half. I said all the backs, so... Yeah, the six backs really played well in the second half, I thought. Absolutely, and yeah. the goalie's handling was impeccable yeah. again on the day. So once again, congratulations to Mike and his fellow selectors on this famous victory for the Brickies today. Their first junior title since 1959. 46 years later, congratulations, Mike. Thanks, Sam. Thanks. <laughs> Me now, I got one of the great... Bricky Stahl was Finton G. Finton is a man we associate more so with the bigger ball. And Finton, after the disappointment of two weeks ago, I suppose, huge disappointment, it was hard to get the lads going again for today. Uh, it was, I suppose, a bit like, but 
they proved out there today that they're well capable of coming back. At half time, having played with the breeze, you led by six points to four. How do, what did you think of your chances in the second half? Well, I thought playing that we'd play well against the wind, that we'd have more space up on the forward line and that would suit us better. And the backs could be a bit tighter. And that's exactly what happened, really. That's the way it panned out. Yeah, yeah. You have a very young team and you had a speedy team. You have a faster team than Fenner. I thought we were a good bit fitter than Fenner, like, and, and it proved that I think the last 10 minutes we, we were a good bit fitter. And yes. And the lads played, they played with great heart. And I think it was a day for commitment and heart, and that's what you wanted, really, oh, as, that's as what, well. That's what you wanted, yeah. Well, Fenton, big night tonight, a big week. A Munster big week. And the Munster Club Championship coming on. What about that? Will that be faced seriously? Very serious. Everything from now on will be serious. As I said, Joe Keane told us early on their first senior title since he opened the new field in 84 or 86. Is that? Oh, that's, that's right, yeah. And hopefully next year you have two intermediate teams now hurling in football yeah. and you'll be pushing yeah. on. We have a lot of good young fellas coming along. Again, and you've right? used, you have a lot of work done at juvenile level. Uh, that, that's bearing fruition as that well. Morrissey and a lot of more fellas, they have an awful lot of work put in, an awful lot of work at underage. And it is proving. Proving today, I suppose, there was 11, maybe 11 under-21s on the team, two minors, which proved there's good future ahead. And that's huge numbers for any junior team. Usually they have a lot of older players and stuff like that, so yeah. I think it's been facing the right way. Once again, thanks to Finton G, and enjoy the celebration. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Right, lads. With me now, we've got two of the victorious winning team here today. Team captain, Fergus Nugent. Fergus had an absolutely Trojan hour out centre forward in the middle of the field. Well, what's your assessment of today's victory? Um, well, I felt we opted a lot in the second half. Uh, we struggled for the first 20 minutes. We got a few scores just before half time that really lifted us. It was very important to go in ahead at half time. And um, after half time, I suppose the goal was the big difference. David's goal made a huge difference. Um, we really opted after that. and. Um, I suppose that was a major turning point in the game for us. A lot of people said the first goal would be vital, but again, your fitness told, and you have a very young team, a very fit team, uh, yeah. told in the second half. That's right, Tom. I think we had 10 under 21s on that team today, so um, I suppose we had the legs in the end, like, but um, we, it was a real tough game. Now, Fenner really put it up to us, you know, so we really had to dig in there today, you know what I mean? So Great stuff, and the season isn't finished yet, Fergus? No, um, it's full. Um, we're going to go full steam ahead now for the Monster Championship. Um, well, well, we have the chance to win that, we, we'll go full belt ahead for that. Does that mean there'll be no celebrations this evening? Uh, or will no. it, I suppose we'll be back to, back to training uh, Thursday or Friday. We all, yeah, we'll do a couple of nights and we'll be back training at okay. the end of the week. OK, it? also with Fergus, we have full forward James Cooley, who got a vital point just before half-time. And as Fergus said there in the interview, it was so important to get them few scores before half-time. That's right, yeah. Um, so was Fenner on top, really, playing against the wind. Their heads were up. Um, our backs were to the wall and the few scores before half time made a difference. We went in two points up at half time and I think if we'd went in do behind at half time it would have been a, a bit of a downer. We went in ahead at half time, heads were up and we knew that we'd have the heart and the legs to do it from there. They got a very good start to the second half too. They had two points back up on the board within a couple of minutes. That's right, yeah. They got off to a good start. It was, it was what we didn't want really. Our plan was to go out. Uh, race out of the traps and get into a good start in the second half. It didn't happen, but I suppose the fact that it didn't happen, it just shows the character that's in, in our team. 10 under 21s on that team, and the chips were down, everybody dug deep, and it just goes to show uh, the commitment that's there. I suppose with, as I said, with 10 under 21s on the team, Sal Fergus, Jimmy Sheehan, Ian McCarthy, Finney Mack, the old campaigners, I suppose, we were there in 2000 when we won the Junior B. Five years ago, we struggled to win the Junior B, and from there we said, let's make a go for it. And here we are five years later with the help of lads who were only 15 and 16 back then, now showing their bit out there and showing how good they are. Well, James, just before you go, you said you're, you're the veterans of the team, but you're still only in your 20s. So, like, you know, still a very, very young team. Five years ago, it was the Junior B. Now we have the Junior A. That's right. We push on for the intermediate. That's right, I mean, everyone out there in the field today has, an, has at least another five. Like, the oldest on the team, Jimmy Sheehan, 27 year, 26, 27 years of age. So, I mean, five years ago we were winning Junior B. Everybody's going to be there in another five years. Who's to say where we'll be in five years' time? That's great. Thanks, James, and thanks and enjoy the celebrations. Yeah. With me now, we already had the team manager, Mike Shalou, and two of his fellow selectors here, they've st kindly stayed a bit. They're going to put back the celebrations for a few minutes. Phil Kinsella and Noel Murray. Well, Phil... Today, fantastic day for the Bricky Valley. Exactly, fantastic day and terrific, terrific performance by all the all the players and the, and the subs that came in as well. They really dug deep in the second half, and a fantastic display and well deserved, I think. Was it hard to get them up after the defeat? A lot of those lads played on the team who were beaten in the Western Intermediate Final two weeks ago in the football. Was it hard to get them going again and to get the ante up for today? 
Well, I think there's a, there's a great spirit among the Horlands and, and there's, great, they, there's great discipline there. And I think um, they fight for each other and it was a terrific display. Thanks, Phil. Also with Phil, with fellow selector Noel Murray. Noel, staunch picky man down through the years. Well, what's your assessment? Well, I think today they, they just raised their game in the second half when the, when the pressure came on. The first half we didn't play very well. And then when we were playing against the wind and we told them that they had to raise their game and they had to give it all and they gave it all. And at the end of the day, they came out on top. The fitness levels, as I stood out in the last 10 minutes, they really got on top. That seems to be the one thing. You were very, very fit and very fast and very committed. The hunger was there, especially in the second half. And like you were well and truly deserving winners. Yeah, I mean, the team is very young. There's, there was a, 10 of them today, there were under 21 players. So, you know, the, the fitness levels would be very high that, at that age. Like, you'd hope to be, the, to be very fit and they keep it going up to the last minute. And well, that's what they did. the campaign isn't over yet. You're moving into the Munster Club. Well, what's your view on that? Uh, that's a different day. We'll we, we probably be playing the carry champions and we'll see, can we beat them? So <laughs> you'll enjoy the celebrations first? Oh, we will, yeah. OK. Yeah. Again, yeah. thanks to Phil and Noel. Thanks, lads. But, um, Are they? They won. Hello. Well, that's it from today. A fantastic day for the Bricky Rangers. Again, emerged victorious, won 11 to 10 points. The first junior hurling title since 1959. Fantastic day. They played. Brilliant hurling, especially in the second half when they were against the breeze. It really opened up. They showed their pace and their youth. 11 under 21s, great speed and great commitment and totally deserved their four-point victory. Um, with that, we sign off for today and we move on to the Munster Championship. Thank you very much from Parky, from Farfield.